Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to another casted game. We're on the one versus one quick search ladder, and we've found ourselves two players here from the ECL competing against each other. It's Kiss Kachel and our favourite age one lover, Rosotto. The map here is going to be the Caucasus, I believe, spawning to the north of the map in the colour blue. It's Kiss Kachel playing as the Indians with Rosotto. He's playing as the Germans, spawning down to the south of the map in the colour red. A sieve we don't often quite see with Rosotto, so I'm ex excited to see what we will see from him. Ah, bit of a tongue twister. On the western side of the map, Kiska Chow's elephant's moving out. Rosotto's really far from home, it has to be said. I do like his scouting pattern, though, at the moment, trying to take Kiska Chow's four treasures. That way he can move back into his safety of his side of the map and get some treasures. Working on a big 100 food treasure at the moment. That's nice to see. Has Keith Kachel seen it though? I don't think he has. Oh, he has. Oh, he has. He's positioned himself for the. No, he's not interested. He's lit. Oh. Rosado, you let it restart. Maybe he's just saving for the crack shot again. Which is actually a really good play versus India. Any Asian explorer, they do not have the crack shot ability. They have the stun, but not crack shot. So they can't, let's say, move in and snipe it. And Indian explorers, they're great versus multi target attacks multi-target treasures but versus a single they're pretty poor and we can see how bad they are versus this musket 200 hp and had to double stun it to try and get some extra hp off but it's just still there it's still being beaten beat down by double elephants and nothing's happening and uh yeah that's just 50 gold there for kiska Chell, which is not really going to help him here in the first stage and meanwhile risotto is very happy just to wait nearby the beast to get the treasure 100 food 16 xp and that's going to help his age one transition to the second age. Trying to go for a 16 of the age up. And I think that is the right play to go if you can do it. When that villager comes out, he should have about 680 to 7. Um, eh, maybe not even 680. I think he should try still stay for the um, 16 of the age up. It helps the tempo, the second age shipments, the transition to your trading post. Everything's a little bit faster. And that's what we're going to see Rosato do. Let's have a look at Rosotto's deck, because I think we might be in for some non-standard... Oh, well, we've got a very standard deck coming out from Rosotto. Maybe he's actually practicing for his upcoming ECL games, which I'm horribly out of the loop. I don't actually know if they made it to the final round. Uh, I just kind of turn up and watch a few games here and there. I really am behind in the whole group standings and all that kind of jazz. But I know we're in the final week very, very soon. But uh, Rosotto... Quickly crack shots at the Witch Hunter, 45 XP, and then going to go home and build on his home trading post for some more XP income. Very good German play. S business as usual. Slightly defensive aggro fort here from Kies Kachel. He's not in base, but he's outside far enough to cover all his resources. The only problem with this, though, is absolutely begging for German Ulan raids. There's just so much space for... Risotto to move into if he wanted to move into the Indian player's base behind this and is this Keith Kachel building this with uh, three villes? Okay, that's quite a bit of villagers for an agrifort um, age up. Surprised to see no Carney Martyr as well given the amount of safe resources, double gold mine, couple trees, there's at least two hunts in the range and maybe with excellent Carney placement can get a third hunt safely under that as well and that would be very very nice there for Keith Kachel if he wanted to play it that way but Looking to, looks like he wants to prioritise a bit of defence with the Agra Fort. Let's look at Keith Kachel's deck. Anti Naval is the title. Does have two ship shipments, one in age two, one in the third age. I don't imagine we'll see any of those come in. He's going to go for foreign login card number one. Maybe be foreign login uh, into 700 woods and then see where it's up to. I don't imagine Keith Kachel wanting to stay in the second age for too long. The idea will be wanting to get to the third age eventually. The only other play he could do in the second age is Mass Rajput. I know, I know Rajput, they are good, they are really good at the moment, and in this matchup they are redonkulous. They cut Ulans up, they chase down skirmishes, they trade cost effectively, kind of, versus war wagons, and you can just easily mass them with your strong Indian economy. They're mainly food based units as well. Small wood cost, but that doesn't really matter. Interesting to see the Indian elephants here looking to scout the base instead of trying to contest a 115 XP treasure, which is certainly worth trying to go for. 
you know, Keith Kachow currently 230 to the next shipment. That would certainly go a long way to guessing his next shipment, which could be either wood or gold in much, much faster behind this. Rosado here, going to go for a really standard classic build. The only problem is, is that he's kind of fallen into the trap of not knowing... Like, you can play a sieve pretty decently, but unless you know how the sieve plays in and out, you probably don't realise that... Um, little intricate details here that he was housed on his first batch of Verdans because he didn't have enough houses. Uh, you'll probably get that one down in a bit, but... You know, Kaiser Klein, one of his favourite strategies is to chop an extra 25 wood... We have steel traps, but don't actually research steel traps. Build a stable, three houses, buy at the market if you have to. Get your first batch of Olans out, all eight of them, you know, five, or no, seven, five plus two. And now research steel traps on the 700 woods. And if Rosotto had all seven Olans straight away, those explorers would go down very quickly. Those two sepoys would get picked off for three, for free, pardon me. And those five sepoys, they, you know, they wouldn't have been in time for the fights. The Ulans would have been in and out straight away. And Rosado is, I think he's quite happy picking off those elephants and the sepoys. It kind of allows him to do what he wants to. I double racks in bases. Bit awkward here. I'm not really feeling it. I know you're going to go for some crossbows, but those five sepoys are kind of anti raiding measures. I don't imagine Keith Kachel is going to try and cross this huge map. Absolutely huge map. And pressure, pressure you in the second age. So. I don't like a uh, crossbow shipment as well here. He's going to get, he's going to need to have so much housing behind this. He does have steel traps and gang saw. Uh, no space here for log flume in this build order. A lot of uh, crossbow ulans will certainly do a lot of damage, but the thing is, I, I'm just sensing. I'm just putting my fingers in my brain. I'm just thinking, hmm, hum. When Rosado's pushing out with a shit ton of crossbows and ulans, Kiska will be in the third age, sending in three mahouts. Maybe call it Inspiration or Agent of the Mount Lancer, uh, Charmanar Gates Wander, and just having so many units. And the thing is, again, crossbows, 16 attack, 1.25 versus heavy infantry. They're not skirmishers. We are critically weak to Rajput spam at the moment. And I, I joke about that, but Rajputs, a couple of rumor lots, get those elephants back to full HP, the four sour shipment, and good night. I, this is. I do not want to be pushing out without any anti cav versus. Uh, an Indian player, because you know there's going to be Cav coming. You know. Well, I say you know, but Keith Kachel, he's actually ending relationships before calling Ottoman Expeditionary Company. Are you mental? Why would you do that? Why would you do that? Three room lots are like one of the strongest consulate techs you can get. They're so good. And, and because you're going like mass infantry, how they gel with your army is so, Im so important. I would not be ending. He might cancel straight away. He sees it. He might not be thinking to that level, but oh, I mean, oh, he's, yes, no, no, he's calling the Sours. But what does he do now? Am I Brits? Okay, he's going Brits. Uh, he sent export, so maybe, yeah, the, the transition cost will be very cheap, but Sours coming in. Double batch of Minutemen and Explorers around to snare, like, it's just, it's just no anti-cav here, and the Sours have a great time. Uh, only five Gurkhas, I like, I like the small amount of Gurkhas, nice bit of range with them, but they're not doing too much damage. That's where the sepoys coming in, and maybe the Gurkha's there to tank the crossbows, but Rosado thinks he's doing fine. He thinks he's going to have a fine time, but double Minutemen batch. Sowers, in we go. Five Sowers, bad train from the Agrifort as well. In come the Sowers. The Orlans do get a good positioning, but the Minutemen will come down to zone off. Here comes the five sepoys. One elephant snaring down the crossbows. Crossbow mass down really low at the moment. Sowers, all still standing. Do the crossbows... Do the Ulans stay there and fight and save the crossbows, or do they run and protect themselves and sack the bows? I don't know, but Minimen get on the action. Seven attack, four multipliers versus Ulans. They're getting cut down cost effectively. What has happened here to the German army? This is shocking. It's getting destroyed here by India. And all this XP feeding India so much. Five sepoy. Potentially next shipment, maybe Dravidian martial arts. Got trained some camels, and he's now fighting with the Ulans. So the sepoys in ballet mode. And all this time, the Agrifort is just piling on the pressure. And Rosato has the score lead. I, it, it might not be as you know disastrous as we see, but that was a right click from hell there. I do not recommend pushing well, any anti cab versus India. You know Sowers are coming in, and you know the elephants are there, and you know... Well, I mean, there should have been room lots, honestly. He did change Constant to try and get 
HP and brick musk split. It just didn't happen. If there were three room lots there, the game is over. It's GG. But it's not. We're still here. And we carry on. <laughs> Rajputs where it's like, yeah, I mean, the thing is, seeing how fast Rajputs move and how how fast their rate of fire is, which means they, they're, they're even better at snaring because it's the their attack animation fires off quicker, so they spend more time moving instead of attacking. Could do so much damage. And Okay, result is in the next stage. Oh, Keith Kachel ship for their fire sepoys. Um, I think he was there with me thinking, oh, maybe it'd be like a leftover, get some more uh, military, maybe push out, but it's so far to German base, you can't push here. But, you know, German, one more coal mining base, and then they had to push out for silver mines across the map. Both players have got time. They have time, but you've got to consider Rosario's score at the moment. Like, okay, a lot of his scores tied up in the boat, the skirmisher shipment coming in, the 10 batches of skirms, the vet Ulan, but there's not really much Ulans. There's still quite a lot of skirms out here. 10 skirms. It's all pretty nice. It's just, it's still a little bit weak to Sowers, so Keith's got to decide whether he wants to age up, and maybe he might actually want to age up with the Taj Mahal for the ceasefire. Try buying some time. But whatever happens, he's going to need a stable at some point. Because you know that there's going to be a load of things coming in. And you're going to... Okay, Chaminar Gate for the Mahout Lancer. Love it. But you've only got four villages on it. Get more villages on it. You're about to get pushed. You know you're under a timer. You know you just got to buy time. Agri Fort is repaired. Villagers, they do have their great coats. Very nice to see. And British consulates. Oh, they are some chunky villagers. Look at them. Look at how chunky they are. Very nice. But... Crossing the map. Dum -ba -dum -ba -dum I've missed it. There we go. There's the skirmishers. And there's the Vettelans charging in once again. No anti cav here from Risotto. So that Mahout Lance on the edge up can do massive damage. Risotto knows where the hunt is going to raid it. Seapoys dive in, but look at the elephants. They're just pretty they could to move in, but halfway to aging up. This is not a fight we want to take. We're going to be backing off, waiting for the age up, waiting for our shipments, waiting for our technologies. This is kind of. It's a it's a good fight in terms of if you have more stuff, but you know, a couple trades in, skirmishes killed like ten sepoys, a couple of the red coats, reinforcing batch of Ulans, you know the next shipment here from Rizosgui, the nine Ulan shipment. Yes, it's on its way, crossing the map now. More Gurkhas coming up, but they're only age two Gurkhas, eighteen range, sixteen attack. Pitiful versus the twenty range, eighteen attack, vet skirmishes here of Germany. And yes, the Vill's moving back finally, this safe hunt. The Agri the um, one's still going up. Oh, still four on it. But uh, enough time to hide behind the aggro, I think. That's good. Let Germany come in nice and deep. Here, yeah, come into my town. Let me uh, greet you and catch you out. Lance is on the age up. Shipment should be ready here from Keith Kachel. Shipment is ready. Gonna go for Yurumi Regiment soldiers instead of... <gasps> no fucking Mahouts in deck. Oh my god, Keith Kachel. I suppose... That's the best shipment you had at the time, but this is really not great. Right, delete the market. Please delete the market. Get that Mahout Lancer straight onto the skirmishers. Just look at all this high attack cavalry in the back here, but ready just to cut down that Lancer, and the Sepoys are not with the push here, and that Lancer is going to go down ready for three Sepoys going to melee, but Sepoy melee attack versus Cav, colonial units versus Vet. Oh no, where's the Rajputs? Where's the Mahout Lancers? Have you not seen that this this um, matchup is just 100% dominated by the Rash? But they could have done so much damage. Just imagine if all the Ulans go down now out there come Yurumi onto the um, skirmishers unchallenged, but those Yurumi are going to have to go through the vet Ulans, and there's nothing to deal with them at the moment. This Yurumi shipment feels wasted. Mahouts are great, not yeah, not just. A, well, to be fair, that one Marit Lancer did so much work. It's tanked so much, but the problem was there was just nothing behind it. We still don't... Okay, we just have our stable now, but... So you thinking about going Lancer, thinking about Sour. Sour's not too bad, you know? And all of a sudden, Germany's in the lead. Like, India had the game in not just one hand, but in two hands and in a bear hug. It was so close to being done and dusted, but the wrong unit choice... And the wrong kind of um, decisions just really hurt there. The slow age up, 
not going for the Rajputs. Not deleting the market to get that Mahut Lancer on top. Not having any cavalry in transition. We still got more export here, but just imagine, just imagine if all these were room lots instead of um, red coats. Just Vill's on some very far gold mines. They'll go down, but that might serve as a notice to get these other villagers out because. Uh oh, yeah, he's gonna run in. He's running. He's oh no, this is just this is just hurting back. But he's got to do something about this. He's gonna lose quite a few, and the counter raid here from Ver Orlan of Rosolo onto this potential town center. The double raid, loving it. Two villas going down, potentially for five on the top, five on the bottom. Keith Kachar's not going to see this. He just cannot see this. He hasn't got the... Okay, the, the, the Gurkhas are moving across. They're going down, but... A lot of villas went down there. Keith Kachar on the 43 villager mark. Rosado 37 with eight saddle wagons. So probably ahead in eco at the moment. Here come the reinforcements. And not too many Zams here. The Gurkhas going to absolutely... Or Gurkhas, the skirmishers are going to absolutely shrek those um, Zambaraks. Out come the Mansabdar Gurkha, discipline Gurkhas there, that's fine. I think Keith Kachal is probably going to train some more Gurkhas here, but he just needs to fully focus on the cavalry front. Mahout Lancers, Zambaraks, and anything which isn't an infantry. Just really... Where's the anti-cav here? From Risotto! Where's the anti-cav? Like... This is kind of a competition I'd go for as Dutch as well, Skirmish of Vet Huss. And it kind of works really, really well until the, the Discipline Zambarax come out, Mansabdar Zams and all this kind of stuff. But just the Z move is going to get so much work done. There's so many skirms here, but there's, there's no cab to body block or Sowers just to prod down. They're, they're so strong, Sowers versus Skirmishers. Explorer up, Town Center nearly built, Minutemen are going to be called. He has to sell wood quickly, but. Do you do that or do you micro the fight? Redcoats into melee, going to get some good damage out. Two Mahouts in queue, finally, but they're going to be way too late for the fight. And the entire Indian army has been crushed. Couples just been Zamrax behind, but you've got a town center with villages inside. you got one hunt back of the base. Mahout Lance is training, but it's just too late. And it's just gone absolutely tits up here from Keith Kachel. Score drastically now in Germany's favour. Let's ride with him, see what he's up to now. Sending in seven skirmisher. Got the Ulans in queue. Got the skirmishers in queue. That town centre is going down. There's eight villas inside. You can tell that by the AT1 attack by the town centre. Um, praying for a miracle. It is an absolute crime against humanity to take a 24 card deck into a ranked game. And especially with no Mahout Lancers in the third age or even Howder. Like. You know, how does backline could have done so well? That's a shame, that is. It's honestly a shame. Rosado says, feels like playing on handicap. <laughs> I mean, I kind of... I kind of don't... Well, I, I, I don't disagree. I, I think... Pushing out originally with no pikemen was also a very risky idea, especially when you had the ability to train some sort of pikemen. But uh, how Kiskachel has played the latter parts of this game hasn't quite gone the way. And here come the rash puts, but the age two. But they, eh, but there's just too many scums now. They, it may look like they're terrible, but all these all these sepoys are destined to hit the turf, unfortunately. And that is going to be the game. Well played to. Uh, both players, well, well played to Resort for winning that game. And um, some interesting learning points there, I think, for people looking to play this matchup. Going aggressive in H2 there from Germany, not very standard. Did it work out? I, I don't think it did work out, unfortunately. If the Ottomans went to room lots there, the game's over. Maybe a better snaring uh, trap uh, from the, the TC uh, Minutemen. The Explorers were down and out of the game early, but if the Keys Kachel managed to keep them alive, keep them at full HP, bring it from behind, uh -huh. the reverse snare, uh, it just, there's many ways for Risotto to hit that GG bus in the second age, but managed to take a trade, force Keys Kachel to over defend age two, and not actually, you know, Keys did not have a good fight in that situation, Risotto then aged up, and once again moved in with the skirm, well, no anti cav, and there was potential for potential a lot of cav to come out there from india but the wrong deck limited his options and germany was able to punish not too sure if risotto managed to look at the deck and scout the lack of howder or 
um, Mahout Lancer, but uh, in the absence of those cars and in the absence of any Cav being trained, Skirm Ulan, the way to go. Risotto there getting the cleanup. So well played, GG, and I'll see you guys in the next one.